NATO expansion is not over for the Russians. It's a reality. NATO's sitting on its borders. It's not about future NATO expansion. It's about current. Uh, NATO expansion represents the following to Russia. And on the, near this, I will end. It represents a profoundly broken promise to Russia made by the first Bush that in return for United Germany and NATO, NATO would not expand eastward. This is, this is beyond any dispute. People say, well, they never signed a treaty. But a deal is a deal. The United States gives its word unless we're shysters. And if you don't get it in writing, we'll cheat you. We broke our word. And when both Putin and Medvedev say publicly to Madeleine Albright and others, we, Russia, feel deceived and betrayed, that's what they're talking about. So NATO represents on the part of Russia a lack of trust. You break your words to us. What can, to what extent can we trust you? Secondly, it represents military encirclement. If you, look, if you sit in the Kremlin and you look out at where NATO is and where they want to go, it's everywhere. It's everywhere on Russia's borders. But there's something even more profound that's a taboo in the United States. Uh, NATO expansion represents for the Russians American hypocrisy and a dual standard. And they see it this way, and I can't think of any way to deny their argument. The expansion of NATO is the expansion of the American sphere of influence. Plain and simple. Where NATO goes, our military force goes. Where NATO goes, uh, our arms munitions go because they have to buy American weapons. Where NATO goes, Western soldiers go who date their women. Uh, they bring along their habits and all the other things. It's clearly, undebatably, indisputably, an expansion of America's sphere of influence. So there has been a tremendous expansion of America's sphere of influence since the mid-1990s, right plunk on Russia's borders. All the while, every administration, American administration, saying to Russia, including the Obama administration, you cannot have a sphere of influence because that's old thinking. Well, I mean, the Russians may be cruel, but they're not stupid. In other words, what they say is we can now have the biggest sphere of influence the world's ever seen, and you don't get any, not even on your own border. In fact, we're taking what used to be your traditional sphere of influence along with the energy and all the rest. It's ours now. Again, this idea of a winner-take-all policy. This is the enormous uh, resentment in Russia. The relationship will never become a stable, cooperative relationship until we deal with this problem. Does it mean Russia is entitled to a sphere of influence? I don't want to speak for Jack Motlock, but Jack thinks yes, depending on what you mean by sphere of influence. They can't occupy countries. Uh, we had a Monroe Doctrine. I don't know what that meant. But the point is, is that until this is worked out, uh, the relationship will never truly be post-Cold War. The problem is it's taboo in America to talk about this issue of who has a sphere of influence, who's entitled to it. Uh, I think there are solutions, but you can't even get the question asked. 